Hello and welcome to your video lecture on the greenhouse gases. So if you will, you're going to go to greenhouse gas notes. This is what we're doing today. Um, you'll find the video lecture that you're watching right here. You'll, the videos we watched in class are the ones I'll instruct you to watch are right here and right here. If you're in person, you have a printed copy of these notes. If not, your editable copy is right here. You'll put words where it says text and in all of them. I've been finding a lot of you are not filling in all of the notes. I will start taking off points for the amount of work that you are missing. So let's make sure we're doing all of the work that I ask you. Some troubleshooting tips and let's get started. So let's go where we're supposed to. Yesterday we spent time learning all about the carbon cycle and all of that was to better understand how humans have taken what is natural and what is naturally happening out in the atmosphere and kind of not kind of, but made it disproportionate to what it should be. So we've taken what should be a cycle and a natural cycle and a fix on your own cycle. And we have made it heavy in one category and that is the atmospheric CO2. And all of that plays a part into our greenhouse gases. Now, even though we focus a lot on carbon dioxide, CO2, that's not the only greenhouse gas. So today we're gonna dedicate this lecture to discovering more of the greenhouse gases. So if you look at the definition, a greenhouse gas is a gas in the atmosphere that absorbs infrared radiation and emits it back towards the earth instead of letting it pass through into space. So if you're thinking about the sun's, so this isn't, this isn't like the ozone, which prevents the sun's radiate, some of the sun's radiation from getting to earth. We're talking, the sun has already radiated. It has hit the earth's surface and warmed up the surface and is trying to bounce back to space. But the greenhouse gases are preventing it or kind of keeping like covering, if you will, or a blanket or um, like a boundary or a barrier in between the earth and space and pulling that radiation back to the earth. Now, greenhouse gases are normal, and if you watch the videos, which I highly suggest you do, the extra videos, you're going to see that they're normal and they're good, and we need them, otherwise we would be frozen, or we would be freezing in, uh, in the night and overheating in the in the daytime when the sun is on us. So we need them, but the problem is that we now have more than what we need. And because we have more than what we need, it's leading to an increase in global temperature or climate change. So again, but that's a little bit for tomorrow. Today we're just learning about those gases that are kind of like our blanket or our barrier that's holding our heat in. So the very first one, which surprises most people, is water vapor. So that's why we said when we were going through the different air pollutants, water vapor is actually an example of an air pollutant because it is a greenhouse gas. So water vapor is the most abundant greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. Water vapor enters the atmosphere mainly through evaporation or what you see on the left hand side of your screen going from a liquid to a gas. But it can also happen through transpiration and volcanic activity. So transpiration again is that special kind of evaporation that happens as the plants let out water vapor through their stomata. And then volcanic activity can also heat up the water or the liquids around it so that um, we get an evaporation. Good, so water vapor is again one of those molecules that traps the heat, right? That bounces that radiation back to the earth instead of out to space. Another of our greenhouse gases and the one we most commonly hear is carbon dioxide. One carbon here, this black one in the middle, and then two oxygens double bonded to it, carbon dioxide, CO2. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is rising dramatically since the Industrial Revolution, which happened around the late 1700s. It is mainly produced through the burning of fossil fuels, like we talked about when we went through the carbon cycle, while burning of things like wood is normal and can normally and naturally release some carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The fact that we are taking millions and millions of years old of our, of our carbon sinks and burning them, combusting them, and releasing that CO2 into the atmosphere, that's where we have the issue. That's where we're throwing everything off balance. CO2 levels increase due to deforestation. So not only are we taking our 
things. And not only are we increasing the CO2 levels when we burn things, when we use our fossil fuels, but we are also taking away that other part of the cycle, the plants that take in carbon dioxide and energy from the sun to make or photosynthesize or create their own food, their glucose. Not only we're taking we're taking the photosynthetic or the things that make their own food, we're taking those away too by deforestation because we're trying to make more room for the growing population. Again, this is also an issue because as we cut the trees down, oftentimes we burn them or we use them for other products like paper products, and we are destroying that carbon sink because remember, carbon sinks aren't just the fossil fuels and the oil. Um, they are also things like uh, human beings are sort of kind of small carbon sinks, but forests actually hold a lot of carbon as well because remember, it takes hundreds of years for plant trees to grow nice and huge and large. That's hundreds of years of taking in carbon dioxide and creating glucose and storing it in their uh, plant material. So the fact that we're destroying trees is also a big deal and leading to a large amount of carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere. Good. And because we took the, we took the things that clean the air away, our air is not as clean either. We're taking away the carbon, or we took, we took away the things that take the carbon dioxide so we're also not only making the problem worse, but we are making it harder for the solution or the natural process to happen to filter in that carbon dioxide. The next one we talked about is cow farts or methane, CH4. Methane gas is a product of livestock farming, so it's not just cows, it's um, chickens, pigs, uh, anything else that you hugely an industrial farm farm, so like think huge, huge farmhouse, huge slaughterhouse, that kind of stuff. So those are producing a lot of methane gas. So when forests are removed to make room for, so not only are the cows making it worse by releasing methane into the air, when forests are removed to make room for the cattle farms, um, this multiplies the greenhouse gas problem because um, we're taking away, again, the trees, the natural filters or the natural takers of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Also, methane is also produced in landfills, so as we generate more trash, we are increasing the amount of methane release. Uh, methane is released when trash and garbage decomposes. Our next one is nitri nitrous oxide. There we go, struggle a little bit. So it's two nitrogen bonded to one oxygen. This probably something you've never seen before, but it is found in fertilizer. So big think big farmers use fertilizer because again, we want our plants to grow nice and large so that we can feed our population. But um, as they spray this fertilizer on their fields, it can react with water. So they spray and put down the fertilizer in like a little pellet. And then if it rains, it can react with that liquid water and release this nitrous oxide into the air, which is another greenhouse gas. Again, even though the chemical formula looks similar, this is not NO2, this is N2O. So the, the nitrogen compound that we learned about with acid rain is different than what we're looking at right here. So this is a fertilizer, the nitrous oxide, the nitrogen oxide is an acid rain component, so make sure you distinguish those in your head. We, one of your videos that you're going to watch today, because you are going to follow my directions and watch the video, is this one right here. So it talks about how farmers are changing or challenging the traditional use of fertilizer and thinking of new ways because they do realize that this is an issue and they want to try to prevent the spreading of the greenhouse gas and also one of the things it talks about here in the video is it's wasteful for farmers it's not doing them any good if their nitrogen is going up into the atmosphere they want the nitrogen down in the soil so that it can help the plant so they are aware of this issue and trying to make it better most um, most farmers do realize this because at the very least they're wasting their money on the fertilizer that's being released into the atmosphere we are not going to watch it though. You're going to watch it on your own time. This should sound or look familiar to you. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. CFCs are in aerosol are found in aerosol sprays and refrigerants. 
they are not only a greenhouse gas, meaning that they push, uh, they reflect the radiation back to Earth. They are responsible for the hole in the ozone. We talked about this when we discussed our ozone and how it protects us from the harmful UV rays. CFCs eat through the ozone, the O2 molecules, by reacting with them. Remember we said one molecule of CFC, chlorofluorocarbon, can destroy about 100,000 ozone molecules. So it's really, really um, dangerous or it's an issue. CFCs have largely been banned in many countries, with over 200 countries agreeing to cease production by 2030. So for the most part, you won't find these anymore in your aerosols like spray paint or hairspray or refrigerators. But um, if you have a refrigerator that was, or for some reason, hairspray or spray paint that was created around the 70s or 80s, um, it might have CFCs in it as well. I've got a beautiful graph for you. Not that I expect you to completely understand this graph, which was uh, created by NOAA a few years ago, but it is tracking the use of, I'm thinking, it is tracking the use of some of these greenhouse gases. So you can see NO2 right here. Uh, we have a sharp increase from the 1980s to 2010, perhaps 2015 right here. So it is increasing. As you can see, you can see our CFCs here on the graph as well. We have a couple different types, but they do peak around this uh, 1990s, 1995, and then we start to see them slowly decrease. And hopefully, again, we want these lines to all be going down, not be going up. And that are, those are the only ones I really wanted to talk about. So we've identified and noticed that CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, are an issue. And we've done something about it. You can see the lines going down, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, we want it to decrease even more. But if you notice this purple line with the, the um, fertilizer here that's being released into the atmosphere, that's only increasing. So this is an issue that we haven't really addressed yet. We haven't done much with. And personally, I think it's up to your generation and a little bit of my generation to raise awareness um, of this greenhouse gas that kind of gets overlooked and overshadowed by carbon dioxide. And lastly, yep, lastly with our greenhouse gases is ozone, but this is the bad ozone, aka smog or O3. So ozone, again, distinguishing in the upper atmosphere or the stratosphere is beneficial because it blocks UV rays. That's the ozone that chlorofluorocarbons, CFC, destroys. However, ozone in our lower atmosphere is considered a greenhouse gas, so that's smog. It is produced uh, in a follow-up reaction when products of combustion are exposed to sunlight, so our um, oxygen that's being released in a combustion reaction, as it hits the sunlight in the electronic site, it can become O3, and then that is what we consider a smog when it's found in our troposphere. So another one of the greenhouse gases. Okay. I hope that you have enjoyed this video lecture and you've identified these different greenhouse gases. These are definitely going to be something I will be testing on. I'll expect you to know. It might be helpful for you to create your own study guide for these greenhouse gases. So maybe write the greenhouse gas on the front of a note card and then on the back write what it is. Uh, I would definitely expect you to know what a greenhouse gas is. So if we go back to the very first definition, a greenhouse gas is a gas in the atmosphere that absorbs infrared radiation and emits it back to Earth. So the, it doesn't let it pass through space. So they're like a blanket, except we've put on too many blankets now and we need to take one off. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the greenhouse gas lecture. Please email me if you have questions and have a great day.